All right. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, my name is Jerise Pappas, and I am a transformational coach who uh, has a strong background in the Enneagram. And today I am having the pleasure of interviewing with Robin McTagg. And uh, we are both fellows, uh, I should say sixes in the Enneagram, although I like to say that I start at type six, but I will say more about that later. And so uh, my inspiration with this, uh, this interview and this interview series that I'm doing is to bring awareness to, uh, to all and, to, and from the standpoint of the Enneagram to highlight the, the gifts of what we all embody in ourselves, um, but, the, but to bring it to a really practical level of how to embody these gifts of these archetypes. So today we're gonna to be talking about uh, how type six can uh, benefit from, its, their, from the relationship to type three, and we will also touch on type nine. So um, this is a completely unscripted, organic uh, interview, and we will see what emerges. And I would like to um, let my friend Robin over here say a little bit about who she is and her work. And go ahead, Robin. Well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. And so my title is Master Holistic Healer because I believe we need to take care of all of ourselves. And so I do some metaphysical teaching to adults and children. That's in person. And then online, I, I do coaching as well. So I've created a life of choice coaching. So taking my background in psychology, conflict resolution, and combining that with energy and metaphysics and some of the Enneagram and dream coaching to create something unique to the individual. Oh, beautiful. Um, and I love, I love what you just said about uh, creating something unique to the individual. Because uh, there it is, that, in, that is, it is an expression, actually, of type three. For to me, type three is the, um, represents like the exalted individual, the individual who is able to, sh who shines their light. Um, I was just listening to uh, Jessica Dibb the other day, and uh, she was uh, referencing this point as uh, glowing abundance. I'm sorry, glowing, well, glowing abundance is, you know, it's inside of it, but glowing authenticity, actually. Mm -hmm. And I know as myself, who starts at type six, I really value authenticity. I am always scanning, to use a, a six terminology, I'm always scanning for what is authentic, what has value, um, you know, are you telling me the truth? Um, <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, yeah. my, uh, my BS detector is always on, right? Always on. But then deeper than that, um, you know, sh glowing authenticity is, I think, a magnificent expression for uh, whether we tar start at type six or nine, but it is to me, uh, the, and it could be the exalted six that is able to take in their environment, see what's needed, collaborate with others, and include their light, right? Include the light of who they are, but, it, but at the same time, including everybody else's light for the greater good. So I you know, I just wanted to just ride right off of what you just said. And, you know, how would, would you like to share on that point? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, that's what makes my heart sing is to be able to have that collaboration and really feel like everyone's included. Like I used to do when I worked corporately, I did a lot of union work. And the three was very handy, even though with that six part, there was a lot of fear. But you know, people would call me formidable because I would stand up for other people and it was like, there was no way that you were going to mess with me. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it was the common good. It's like everyone needs to be taken care of. 
you know, um, I, I absolutely love that you said that because sometimes um, type, you know, type six can get a bad rap. And some people can be, oh, you know, I want to be anything but a type six, you know, uh, we're full of fear and anxiety and uh, like, um, like it's something to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, um, you know, like Frodo in Lord of the Rings, right, we have this capacity to detach from uh that which scares us and step into a vision uh greater than us that is full of formidable strength to use that word and um but there's no in a way there's no effort we give ourselves over to the cause of the greater good right yeah and totally. it is it's the it, it is the quintessential hero archetype in mm -hmm. a certain way so uh, I really would love to stay with this for a minute. And maybe, um, you know, you just, you know, and another thing that comes with six territory, which I want to call out is there's a, there's a certain kind of a, of a humility, a, a willingness to do the nitty gritty. Um, there's not, often there's really not a whole lot of big ego in it. We're, we tend to be more willing to set that aside and just roll up our sleeves and do what needs to do. Um, we can be great worker bees, right? Yeah, and sometimes then, to our detriment, but. <laughs> and sometimes to our debt, right, sometimes to our de detriment. Um, but, and, that, and that's a little bit what I want this conversation to be more toward is by a six is really calling in that three energy, mm -hmm. right? That gives, that is in a way is giving us more permission to shine our light as individuals and leaders, right? And yeah. to take that out into the world, right? That's what I'm doing right now um, with my business, right? It's way easier for me to keep it small and wait for people to find me, um, you know, but I'm like, you know, the world, Somebody said to me last week in my in my cohort of of coaching peers, uh, I love I want you to do more Facebook lives. I need more of you in my life. What a gift to hear this, right? And I thought, wow, I've been playing it too small. And my sense is she starts at if she doesn't start at three, she has a lot of three in her. And so I almost took it as a sign from the universe to answer the call and step out beyond my comfort zone. I really feel like right now, the world or society needs help, needs us to step into and cultivate our healthy six, right? Not just as sixes, but for everyone to know, to get a sense of what is a healthy six. And, and if you are feeling fear, angst and anxiety, which many people are in our society for a multitude of reasons that we don't need to go into, but, but maybe we can talk about, uh, Robin, how we shift. How do, what, how do, you, how do you, have you de developed in yourself the ability to shift when you do have fear and anxiety into that greater, uh, more courageous, formidable stance, as you say? Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of it for the six. I, and I think that's part of going to the nine, right? The humanitarian in us, because it is for that greater good. So when I feel the fear coming up and, and that's part of it for me, it's like, how authentic is this? I don't want to be like everyone else. And, you know, that's where I have the struggle. It's like, oh, you need to do it this way and that way. Like my example I gave recently was my backdrop. It's not in my colors. It's not in blues. So what? <laughs> you know, it's uh, beautiful earth tones, the browns and the greens of the world. And it's like, I don't want to feel constrained. Right. So when I can tap into that and kind of own that strength that I get from that of my uniqueness, then I can step forward. And similar to you, I've been doing more speaking engagements and getting into that and doing the Facebook lives. Though again, it's like, okay, how do I do it in a way that's comfortable for me, that people can relate to, 
and doesn't feel like I'm being boxed in because that to me that's a lot of the sick stuff it's like okay I've had these fears I've had these constraints I've worked in these different ways and now it's time for me to be who I am and I think that's part of also, as we age, like with the psychology, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, when we get our other needs met, met then we move up. But I think it's a natural progression of um, just who we are. And I think that we can embody that. And yeah, the, the biggest piece for me is just tapping into that greater good for the world. Because I, what I talk about is creating a world of kindness one person at a time. So that's kind of my mission statement in life. It's absolutely beautiful. And do you have um, specific practices uh, of any sort that you use uh, to support yourself in moving from, I'd love to, you know, moving from, you know, when it happens, when, when the fear is present, how do you shift it? Yeah, a lot for me is physicality. I need to get back into my body because I can go to my spirit so easily. I've been training in that area for so long and I teach it. So it's really easy for me to be in the spirit, but we can't do anything in our spirit. We need to be in our body. So the breathing movement is really important to me. Um, today, I didn't get out for my walk yet. And it's like, I can feel that. It's like, I need to have movement. And some of my best thinking is done when I'm going out for my morning walk and it's a morning contemplation. And and it's connecting inside. So connecting heart, body, mind, and just reminding myself that I'm okay. And if I need to take some time out and do something else, I can. Mm -hmm. But it's really, I really feel it in my body now that I'm more and more connected to it. Yeah. So I really find that the movement's really important. Yeah, I, I second that. Um, as a matter of fact, I I, I'm a, I love to bike ride, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and it's not like I do speed racing or, you know, like the, that style, but it's more um, getting out there, you know, climbing hills, f breathing in the, the, the air. Um, and I will often be listening, you know, to something inspirational, whether it's uh, an Enneagram recording or Matt Kahn or Abraham Hicks, you know, usually it's something inspirational. And while I'm moving, I have that, those inspired words going through my body and, and I can feel the, um, the tension or the anxiety leave. It's, it's, it really is like a, um, it's like a, it's like a massage release. Yeah, it's very visceral. I find it very a visceral thing for me. And I agree with um, sound is so important. I do have an Enneagram prayer that I do daily, which I love for my type. And I think music is really important. And I actually I'm coming up with some possibly a program around that. But I find that we connect to our body when we sing or do some kind of vocal thing. So yes. the more that we can, you know, just express that. And that's one area which I find interesting because I can go out and sing in public, walking around, whatever, and I don't care what anyone thinks. That's one thing that has never really bothered me, <laughs> no matter what sickness comes up around it. <laughs> Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I, can, I can be the same. I can be the same way. Um, you know, it's, it, as you were sharing before about that uniqueness, it's interesting. I know we, we're speaking um, about our connection to the, the six and the nine point. I mean, rather the three and the nine point. But I also heard a flavor of four. Uh, when, you know, and, it's, and it's interesting. I relate to it myself. And, it, so, and I'm speaking to this because there can be a lot of mistypings out there. A lot of uh, sixes that think they're fours or fours that might think be thinking they're sixes or people that start at those places. And uh, there is something in type six that I, and I start, and maybe this is a good time to bring this in. So for those of you that speak in terms of there's these instincts, right? And the instincts are how we uh, be biologically get our needs met. You know, um, it's how we are oriented essentially to survive 
And then there's these three basic essential ways that we call it um, sexual or one-to-one, -one, our self-preservation needs, and then our social needs, how we organize in all three ways to survive as an individual and a species. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. If you're listening to this, you can look that up a little more deeply. And I'm, so I'm going to assume that you have some background in that or can look that up uh, quickly enough. I, I happen to start with sexual or one-to-one. -one, and then self-preservation is my middle instinct. And then social is my third. Uh, I think used to be, it used to be way blind. Now it is uh, coming more online um, as I consciously give it attention and have been stepping into teaching and speaking and doing more um, leadership roles in that, in that way. And so I, I mentioned this, the, the sexual, so you, you, you blend the sexual piece with six. And I know for me, I, I love to come forth with my individuality. And, uh, and I really enjoy, like you were saying also, to have an uncompromised unique expression in the world that uniqueness. And so it isn't only, uh, you know, the type four that has um, a leaning toward uh, expressing their uniqueness out in the world. Um, so I feel that d depending on where you start in the Enneagram, um, and uh, this might be a time for me to say it that way since Robin had said, what did you mean by where you start in the Enneagram? So, I like to be a little bit more rigorous in my languaging. And so on that note, if I, if I make an I am statement, like I am a six or I am a fill in the blank, to me, it, it sounds very fixed and that there isn't room for growth. And I feel that these Enneagram types, they all live inside of us. All nine types live inside of us. So, I like to stay, I started six, and yes, six is absolutely my growth path. But as I evolve and as I relax, and I'm saying this not only for me, but I think for everyone, that we then become more ambidextrous to uh, embody, given whatever situ situation is presenting, every archetype of the Enneagram. And the highest type becomes, po the, the highest, uh, essence and, and, and virtues of each type become available to us. Whether we know the Enneagram or not, they do. So I wanted to really call that in as well because uh, the six in us represents the, I feel like the manifested expression for all of humanity to ground and live in these bodies and live in this world in a practical way that is calling forth the best that of, of all that we are. So um, you wanna tag team that download? <laughs> sure, um, so for myself with the instincts or the subtypes, it's um, self-prez, one-to-one, and then social. And definitely the social was something I had to learn. Plus growing up where I was alone a lot as a kid and moved a lot. So I didn't really have that experience. And so it was a real learning. Like even now with networking, it's still, sometimes I feel like I'm really still learning and navigating and, and seeing people have these different social connections. And for me, because the one-to-one -one is stronger. It's like I really like to have the one-to-one -one and go deep, like a meeting I had yesterday with someone who we spent three hours talking. But doing the small talk and doing the social thing is like, <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> and having a process helps. But that self-prez, it's kind of interesting because the um, example that's given a lot is what is what do you fixate on or what do you notice when you come into a party well for us it's like where's the food and the drink and stuff like that and I think that's part of six anyway where we want to know our surroundings and just to feel comfortable and safe and so it's just kind of a natural instinct anyway and I think with the self-pres it's it's um 
it has been a real learning to be able to just be comfortable and walk in and be okay with that. Whereas when I was younger, I was so shy and it was like, oh, are people looking at me? So it was a real challenge to be able to do things like this and, and be out there speaking. So it helps us to learn where our growth is, like you say. So it's like, yeah, it's not so bad. It's like, how am I going to be my unique self? How am I going to express myself if I don't do this? And mm -hmm. the more balance there, and, and we were talking earlier about both being Libras, where balance is a huge thing for us. And, you know, we're really great with helping others. And it's like learning that for ourselves is always a bit of a dance, which balance is anyway. So the more that I can express in those different areas and see how they're balancing. And uh, it brings me more comfort to know that I can express and I can use these different areas to see where I may be going off track if I am. With the self-pres, one of the things I find is because I can read people really easily, it's a bit of that two-ness where we look like we're being so accommodating because we're very you know, pleasing and, and want to get along, that kind of thing, and having problems with the conflict, that kind of things, where, you know, that was a real issue for me growing up. So I actually took the conflict resolution certification and learned to do that. On the other hand, there's the place of understanding where people are at. And I think that's one of the gifts from that is helping to see with the bigger picture where people are and also being able to draw them in and, and kind of help people relax too and, mm -hmm. and make more of a cohesive group or interaction. So I think there's that piece of it too. It's more of the gifting part of it. So it's always kind of seeing where you're at and, and how you're negotiating things and feeling more and more able to just be what, with whatever is coming up. And that's what I'm finding is the more I'm just able to be present to whatever it is, the more I can be with it in the moment. And really that's to me a big part of learning about the six and the subtypes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really good. And you know, something you were speaking to or what I heard in the unsaid is uh, you know, part of the, the social, instinct expression is reading a room, reading a group, knowing what's needed. And that goes hand in hand with uh, type six and our ability to bring that. So what I was hearing in, in what you were just sharing is when you did that conflict resolution work, right, that provided a certain foundation Mm -hmm. uh, be, giving you uh, more relaxation around where where the self-preservation instinct that you lead with could get wobbly and or contracted, but then here you strengthened it with this uh, attention on developing that strength. And then what I heard is that it then gave you a greater gift uh, from a social group standpoint to then be able to read a room and probably read an organization. Uh, mm -hmm. around around what is needed. Is that um, true? Yeah, that's true. And then doing the energy work and learning how to shield so you're not taking on others' energy. I think that's so important. The more that we can do that, all types, but really around the six and the twos especially, the more we can keep our energy for ourselves and, and learn that this is mine and that's yours. And, right. you know, and I find the numbers... In the different systems all correlate and with the numerology the six is about correct responsibility i mean i'm i'm a six in both so i so i have both of it right so that was my big learning i was responsible at a very young age like four years old for my mother so it was um yeah really learning what that is yeah so and me too i happen to have been uh it's so funny there was a little uh conversation about this on any grand openings about you know your birth order but which I happen to have been the oldest of five and there's a 14 year difference and same mom between myself and my youngest my youngest my youngest sister but it it there's I maybe because I started six there's a leaning toward being responsible and duty 
is actually an expression of the social expression of six, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I hear that in what you're saying. So even though that that might that was also my you know that also is my third expression uh, with regard to the third ranking in tar with regard to instinct, um, it still is available. It still is present in. Um, being able to do the right thing and take care of the whole. Um, I think we just have more ease with it, uh, the more developed that we become. Um, for me, starting with one-to-one -one as a six, uh, there's a, an intensity that I can have, right? And um, however, it's, it, it becomes magnetic and, and with a certain charisma when I'm relaxed and being myself. I, I, I recognize, like, I think I told you the other day when we first talked that when I saw your picture, I sensed that you started self-preservation. So from all the work I've done, and I, and I do, I'm, I'm saying this for people who are listening, who are exploring the instincts. One of the great things about learning about them is bec then you can heal them, you can grow, you can grow inside of them. I think our inner children live inside of our instincts. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I learned, uh, going back eight years, how to dial back my intensity, so that there could be more room for others to come in, and play, and work, and uh, allow for more collaboration. Uh, and so it was an undoing of a need to be so strong in how I presented, which back in the day, um, there, you know, when I was in high school, let's say, before I knew anything about the Enneagram, is where is when that more counterphobic expression of, uh, of my instincts came out to take care of myself. I was emitting an energy of don't mess with me, a little bit more of the strength and beauty intimidator. Um, but even, even just exuding, I've got it, you know, leave me alone, right? And over time that, you know, undeveloped was in the way of what, of the, really the heart of who I am as a six, which loves to play with all kinds of people, loves to include, and, uh, and my greatest joy is to champion bringing out the highest in another, you know, <laughs> hence why I've developed to go into the work I'm in now. But without having done the work on my original, but on my starting instinct, that would get in the way. That would get in the way of, um, well, everything, but particularly, uh, working with a group and putting myself out there because I would have been, I would be too afraid to risk fill in the blank, right? Um, so I, again, I love how you said before, and that is true about point nine, um, the, 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 the highest vision of what's going to serve the whole. And I often think of the nine as the, the feeling of home within ourselves, mm. uh, our wholeness within ourselves. So I remember in one of my classes with um, B. Chestnut, B. Chestnut and Uranio, Uranio Pais, how they speak about these lines as the, the, the line of the path of revolution and the path of evolution. And uh, point nine being the path of evolution for those of us that started six and point three being the path of revolution. And that really did, is how it unfolded in my life. And I'm curious how it did in yours. At first, I spent more time even hanging out with healthy type nines and, and, and going to that point of remember, and it's where I found the comfort to remember uh, on many levels that I am safe in this world, that I am whole and complete, and that I am in that the that existence itself is benevolent, that the universe, the universe does have my back in a co-creative way. Uh, and it's something that I and I say co-creative because there are a lot of atrocities that happen in this world. And yet, 
as a six, how, you know, I'm the one that's on me to bring and reignite faith and trust and with courage to have that be an ongoing recreation of that feeling of home within myself. And then the path of revolution, point three, is to take this formidable strength and presence, this grounded ability that we have, and bring our gifts out into the world. To shine Absolutely. our light, to shine our light and call the light in others also forth for whatever it is that we're up to. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. It's like if, yeah, finding that trust that we need and the courage in the six and, and evolve to that, we need both of that and the wings too, though you haven't really touched on it. But yeah, I, I really see as I have evolved. And when I first learned the Enneagram, without really understanding it, I figured it was a progression that I was going through one through nine, and I would see those earlier points in my life where I did that, like the two being the doormat in the marriage that I left and all these different things. And then when the nine was expressed, I actually burst into tears. Mm. Like I had such a strong visceral reaction to it. And it's like, yeah, that's me. I'm the humanitarian. I do all the conflict resolution. It's like, it's all about love. It's in my languaging. It's, you know, <laughs> that's all I talk about. And then it was when I delved into it and it's like, yeah, what's that initial reaction that I have and realized, no, that's the six and, and that's going to the nine. And, and then seeing in my past where with the three, it was around having to look at in a certain way and then, you know, letting go of that after dealing with a serious illness. And it's like, really redirecting my life and that's what it took for me and that's why I, my thing is to help others not get there right so it's that bigger cause but even i was at an event last week and it was what are your what is your vision for the next year the world and it's like peace on earth you know that kind of thing like it's no small thing i'm not talking about bringing out a course or something it's like let's change the world <laughs> And so it's really fun. Like, I really like that play that you're talking about because, yeah, I can really feel that connection when I have my connection to source and know that, like you talk about the co-creation, because it is. I bring that universal love principles within me and then I can express it to the world. And when I start to retract and go into the fear, bringing the three into bring that courage out to say, yeah, I, I am an individual and we all have this within ourselves. And to me, it's that the six piece is bringing the inclusiveness and it kind of brings it all together to bring it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it takes the other thing that we, that we have as six to, sixes is an incredible resourcefulness inner resourcefulness uh, mm -hmm. and strength. And it is, do you, you know, I know you know what I mean, because I think you, when you were first talking about that formidable part of you, okay, so you might start at self-preservation and I might start at, at sexual, and yet there, there, but I think we were, you were speaking to, and I just want to highlight again, that there's something about this strength, and it's not muscle strength, it's, it's inside of courage, the strength of the heart, right? Mm -hmm. And that we have this inside of us when, when we're terrified, when, we, when that feeling of angst comes over us, when we have anxiety about something, to go deeper into, into ourselves, into our first, you know, release, release it with physical exercise, doing yoga, doing ever, whatever you need to do move that body right and but then um draw go into you know the 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 trunk of your inner tree with your heart with you know through the heart the courage mm -hmm. of the heart is the true strength of of the six and to then allow 
Um, I, I literally will hear myself say no. I will say no to when, when that fear wants to take me over. I now am able to immediately feel it and, and literally put like a line of demarcation. And then I go into my practice of saying um, the visions of what I'm actually manifesting that are calling me forward, which is to be of service and uplift people. So do um, you wanna say anything to, to that when that comes up in you and about courage, a little more about courage in the six? Yeah, I, th I think that's true for me as well. It's also kind of pegging that to past places where you were able to step through it. So if it's, if you're really deep in it, and it's like, how do I find my way out? It's like, okay, what have you done in the past? And, you know, for, I had quite a traumatic childhood. And it's for most people, they wouldn't have necessarily gotten through it to the degree that I have. And, and I don't really talk about it that much because like you talk about that kind of humility at the same time, there's a place where people need to know that. So that kind of comes up for me. So I kind of go to that place of, yes, this is important. And if I can't do it for myself, it's like for others. So then I can bring it back around. So it's like the internal, external, internal. So there's that uh, place where I can pop out. So I need to come back in. But it all, I mean, it always starts from inside, but there's sometimes the going out if it's so deep that I'm feeling um, hopeless because with the six, we can go into that hopelessness. And so if it, it's that deep, it's like I need to sometimes go a little bit out to come back in. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when I was in high school, I mean, and uh, so I'll be transparent with uh, probably which one of the things that was one of my greatest traumas in life. And I had, I uh, was in high school for a month and this was before cell phones. So it was, uh, I got I'm one month into high school and I get prank calls. I got them two Saturdays in a row from a group of girls. I went to an all girls uh, Catholic prep school and it was the eighties and it was again, Catholic prep school. So what they said, which um, wasn't true, it was, it, this was social bullying. Um, and they said, Jerice, we know you're a lesbian. We're going to tell the whole school and stop hanging out with my very first friend. And then the next Saturday I received this phone call again and at the time, what, while my, uh, my parents and the elders did their best, I think the, the, the weapon that they took, that these girls took out, which was the lesbian thing, um, scared my parents and the, the Catholic elders. You know, this, that was really a no-no back then. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I don't even think that is true of me as, um, you know, as a, a sexual being anyway. Um, but what happened now when I look back with wisdom was my, the essence, the essence of my light got put out. My connection to be able to draw on that I am safe in this world, um, my faith that I am, that it's, a, that it's safe to move through the world, my, my connection to three, that that light went out, you know, it's like, oh, I better stop shining my light. Because if I shine my light and show my care or friendship, I'm, bad things are going to happen, right? So then I lived through this experience, but I, I came really close, really, really close to offing myself by the end of high school. Um, you know, at that time, the, um, you know, my, the, the, I'll just call them the elders. Um, there, I, I feel like I should have been taken out of that school. Like I would have re I would have parented myself differently if I could go back, you know, to this time, but somehow my being, uh, hung in there and, um, you know, and, and I think this is, uh, a tenacity that I have for life. And, I was able to then be of service to one of my first college friends and 
I was able to sense that depression in this other individual and then use what I just lived through to be of service to this person. And then I have continued to find other examples of, of being able to be of service in this way. So uh, it really, one of the things it left me with is the power of the word, right? The power of how we see each other and what do we call forth in each other? So I think this is why I'm such a huge proponent and why I'm stepping in, you know, stepping into more powerfully all the time of being a professional coach. And this is, this is that point three, seeing the light in the other and calling it out, right? And that's what I missed. I didn't have that when I was in high school. And somehow, I intuitively knew, even though it was dark times, that that's what I needed, was to have the light of who I am mirrored out of me. And through all the work that I've done my whole life, I have reconnected to essence. Uh, and that's why I love that the leaders and teachers and facilitators of the Enneagram are now giving this attention to essence and, and courage for, while we may not have named it, I'll name it now, courage is the virtue for the six that returns us to faith, that refer, to that almost like that holy trust that keeps us keeping on with, despite how difficult it gets, despite what tragedies happen, despite what happens, we, point six has this unbelievable capacity to pull our bootstraps uh, and, and almost do like Persephone work where we can, we just pull ourselves out of the dark somehow. Um, but we do it much quicker when we have, we also are working in cooperation with others that can reflect our light and call the best out of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. And that strength, it's amazing. And yeah, you don't see the sixes crumble. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, yeah, and, and you know, when you talk about that, it really warms my heart because isn't that what we all want? We all want to be seen. It doesn't matter where we are, but I think it's, it's so important to have that reflected back. And I think it's part of the building of the trust for us as a six so yeah. that we can have th that reflection for us, even though we need to have the inner fortitude and the answers come from within, there's a place of being seen. And that could be because of that holy need that we didn't feel seen by source, that we felt that con connection um, was damaged when we came in and have those trust issues. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I am just, I am feeling such a tenderness and I'm feeling right now the, the sacredness of what mm -hmm. comes at the heart of six. You know, yeah. this is really our gift. This is our gift, this ability to know this, know it in our bones, that it's true that we uh, can and do call this out of each other. And um, I'm feeling like this uh, might be the moment that we invite and challenge um, all sixes and the six in all of us to, um, to call this out of each other, to see the light and uh, to, to acknowledge the light that we see in everybody in our lives, whether it's our family, our coworkers, our, our leaders, to, to, to have this be a practice, how to reflect this back uh, and to call it out in each other. It's, it's, I feel like this is so important right now. Yeah, and it help, helps us get past the fear, right? And, and I know you're in the US and I'm in Canada, so there's some differences there in what's going on, but it really is like the more that we can see that in others and express it the more like for me i know that i do a lot of gratitudes i do gratitudes every day and i think it's so important because um, that helps me to be more present 
And the more I can do it with other people, the more that brings more into the fold and they can see the light in themselves because I'm just a reflection for them, right? We're a mirror for each other. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I feel like we, uh, this is a good place to, uh, to close. I feel um, that if, um, and I will just say if people uh, are inspired by anything we said and uh, you would like to uh, work with either of us as coaches and I, my, my, my business is called Present Your Best Self and um, you can reach me at either jerice at jerisepappas.com uh, or celebrate yourself now at gmail.com. Feel a little bit of three energy in that, right? And, uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, and I want to just thank you for, you know, all the listeners and watchers. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, may you be inspired. May you sh uh, shine your own light brightly and uh, call that out in others. And uh, Robin, why don't you tell people how to be in touch with you as well? So my uh, website is alifeofchoice.ca, since I'm in Canada. And you can reach me at masterholistichealer at gmail.com. Great. And thank you well, so much for thank today. Thank you. This has been super rich. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, bye for now. Bye.